Well, we have a lot of new content. So there's nine new civilizations and all sorts of new buildings and units, but we really like to emphasize the new game systems that have gone in. So the biggest one of those is probably religion. Right at the beginning of the game, civilizations can start to uh, worship a pantheon of gods, which gives them one new gameplay benefit. And it just kind of builds from there throughout the medieval and renaissance periods. We really are excited about that system because it allows players to customize their strategies. When we released Civilization V, we had completely rewritten the combat system. We had completely rewritten the diplomatic system. And to add the religion system, at least as it was, on, layered on top of that, we thought would be a little bit of overkill. So when Ed really attacked us, and he really wanted to accomplish something that fit with Civ V, he really dug down deep and came up with something that we think is really, really cool. If I want this to be a game that I can play over and over again, and I don't want to have you know, the same choices uh, presented to me without a lot of variation. So I like that kind of customization. Um, it's great now that we have the expansion. We have 34 different civilizations to play. So that's a lot of choice right there. When you start a new game up and you decide that you're going to go down the religious path, it starts in a couple ways. First off, there's faith. Faith is a yield in the game, just like culture, science, gold. You get it from buildings, like the shrine or the temple. You might find it among like uh, ancient ruins, things that you find. Once you just get up to that little bit of amount, you get to found a pantheon of the gods. It just happens. The clock starts ticking away towards getting a religion. You have to build up a lot of faith for that. And you choose one belief as your people's brush with religion. Um, all of your cities automatically get the pantheon after that. It doesn't spread beyond your borders. It only starts spreading once you actually kind of uh, elevate it to a full religion. How you get there is with a great prophet. You have a chance to spawn him every turn. But eventually you will get him, and when you do, you can actually use him to found a religion. After you've established your first religion, if you manage to keep building up faith, you can have your great prophet do a holy site, which is going to generate faith, kind of like a landmark will for your great artists. Oh, there's one other thing too. Uh, I mentioned missionaries earlier. You can actually spend faith to build missionaries that will help you to spread your religion faster. You can also use an extra great prophet for that. If you have a great prophet later, they can actually spread religion three times. They can go up to three different cities, boom, 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 before they're expended and really do a big job of, uh, of spreading your religion. Well, I like how espionage lets you sort of get a look inside the other civilizations. That system goes in and starts checking in with what the AI is thinking about for those other civilizations. And if your spies have been there long enough and are of a high enough rank, you start to get little tidbits of information about what they might be planning. They can also rig elections. So every 12 turns, what they do, if they're unopposed, if there's no other any enemy spies in those city-states, is they'll increase your influence a little bit and drop everybody else's a little bit. So it's like a, little, a slow drip of water. If you're impatient, you can do what's called a coup. Now, if it's successful, you'll completely take over the allied spot. The person who was there before will take over wherever you were before, so it happens instantly. And if you're not successful, your spy's executed. You lose all your influence, uh, generally makes a mess of things, but it's, it's for the gamblers out there. I'm a gambler, so I use the button a lot. They have a chance to do a few things. They can either steal a tech, because the more science that that city is generating, the faster your spy is going to steal tech, and you'll be able to watch the bar in your, in your espionage UI. And once it fills up, he'll have stolen a tech, and it'll come into being, and bam, you have it, and then he'll start doing it all over again. That's great, because it, it brings the rest of the world that's going on in the civilization game to life more. You can sort of get the secret plans and thoughts of the other leaders through the espionage system, so that's really what I love. We've always been in an ongoing fight with the game itself to make naval a really compelling part of the game. So we wanted to make it dangerous. We wanted to have a reason for you to build a fleet. And the ability to take coastal cities and give you a foothold in an enemy territory so you can actually start out an invasion like that. You don't have to risk all your land units first. Now you have your naval units. You take that enemy city. You now have a foothold to land all of your other stuff up behind it and move forward. And one area we definitely found some weaknesses it was the AI's ability to gather up an army, get that army across the seas. So we made it so that the embarked units can now stack with the naval units. And now a naval invasion just doesn't take as much space on the map. We've also tried to fill in some holes in terms of nothing between the trireme and the caravel. So we added the, the Galias, which is a ranged Renaissance era ship, and that's actually the first ship that gets a ranged attack capability. It's kind of really nice when you get to that one. But it's a lot of work on the AI it takes to actually gather these fleets together, how they're grouped, how they're sent out, and he's made it efficient by probably over 100%. So they're doing it twice as fast as they were before. The way that they're grouping their fleets together is working much better than it has before. 
But that kind of AI work, the stray great generals that everybody would notice that the AI had one out in the open, easy to capture, a lot of those things we're really trying to squash to make the whole experience even better.